Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. This morning, I'm joined by sisters Ayan, Nusrat and Sharman, and we're discussing the life of great woman in Islamic history, Aisha bint Abu Bakr. So back to the sisters. Uh, Sister Nusrat, before the break, you were uh, giving us a, a very comprehensive rundown of the, the um, story of the slander of... Um, uh, of Aisha oh, yes. uh, and, and um, you know subhanAllah I think we can uh, there's lots of lessons that we can learn from that story I think one of the lessons that generally we learn from it apart from the fact that it's laid the conditions for the Islamic jurisprudence aspect regarding adultery is that one adultery is a um, is, is a slander, being slandered on such an issue is something that can't be taken lightly. The fact that you needed four witnesses shows the gravity and the level of the burden of proof needed. But we can also learn that actually the effects of slander can be very bad because we see that Aisha radiallahu anha actually fell ill and, yeah. and contextualizing this, particularly in the society we live in, some people commit suicide because of these kind of slanders. I mean, um, there's a da'i called Ali Dawa who talked about a woman um, who actually committed suicide because people were slandering her. Yeah. So it shows us actually, it acts as a checks and balance upon mm -hmm. ourselves about the way that we actually should make excuses for people as well That's sometimes yeah. and, if, and verify our sources. But it also shows as well in terms of our self-worth that we shouldn't generally look to other people to exonerate us. We should look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, actually but it to comes do down as well to the Islamic etiquette because mm -hmm. we're told that we shouldn't backbite mm -hmm. and especially not you know spreading rumors and that's one of the things is that you know it's so easy to say something about someone but you don't know how much that's going to affect that person's life and the fact that we have to be so mindful about what we say is a very very big thing mm -hmm. so I think going back to what you just said about having the four witnesses it just makes it more difficult for someone to say oh you know what that that happened I know it happened you know yeah and just kind of obliterate someone's reputation yeah it's true and it words. is you know, it's a big issue. I think when we're reading back on this story, we're obviously seeing the whole thing and it all turned out okay in the end. Mm -hmm. But obviously we forget that there was a time in there when it must have been very stressful, you know, and as you said, Aisha Fadil Ho'an actually fell ill as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Just a quick reminder that this is a live discussion, sister, so please do call in and share your comments or stories about how you've been inspired by this wonderful woman. The number to call is on your screen now or send us a tweet at Women's AM, hashtag WAM15. Um, so, Sister Sharman, the, um, you know, the yeah. story is subhanAllah, I think it's such a, an important one for us to all remind ourselves of and and uh, you know what what kind of uh, lessons have you learned from from reflecting upon this I think it really teaches us how to respond to slander yes yeah. so I mean if anything it highlighted her perseverance and her reaction to um, the rumors that were spread and these days rumors is something that's quite common we hear yeah. with neighbors with friends it's a big big thing but um, you know Hassan ibn Tabit he was one of the um, he also led the cam campaign of slander against Aisha radiallahu anha yet she still you know treated him with you know due esteem and honor yeah so she still treated him the same with respect yeah. and also uh, in regards to the Prophet peace be upon him yes he was obviously hurt and upset but look at his response mm. he instead of going out there and believing the rumors he actually went to Aisha radiallahu anha yeah. and told her to repent and seek forgiveness yeah and uh, so, I mean, how many of that do we see, how many men do we see uh, uh, following this today as well? Absolutely, absolutely true. It tells us a lot about character, doesn't yeah. it? Not just the character of Aisha radiallahu anh, but as you said, the character of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it's, um, you know, something that we should kind of be, be looking at to, to kind of emulate. And we say this a lot, don't we? But, you know, we really need to think about think what that means. And we really need to think about our own mm -hmm. situations. And when was the last time we were maybe in a similar situation? And how did we respond? I think it's also important to remember that when somebody commits a sin, uh, it's not that they're committing a sin against you is mm -hmm. they've committed a sin you know against themselves and really it's it doesn't affect your akhirah it affects theirs and I think we take certain things too personally as human beings we feel that it's somehow a betrayal a betrayal of us if someone's done something yeah and yeah. rather than thinking subhanallah this person has committed a sin against Allah you know they need to repent we take it we internalize that and make it so personal yeah rather than thinking of them and saying like you know they're human they made a mistake they need to exactly yeah to exactly repent. that's a really good point um, I think going back to Aisha we you know we know that actually the Prophet peace be upon him he died when she was still at a very young age so she had uh, you know quite a lot of life after uh, the death of the Prophet Muhammad uh, peace be upon him and again this is something that we don't hear a huge amount um, of so um, sister Ayan can you tell us just a little bit about uh, about that that portion of her life 
I think this was the kind of the the years that we can say alhamdulillah we're so glad that she must she was she was that young in, in a sense because all the hadith that we know about um, marital relationships what happens in the home yeah. all of these things that we probably wouldn't have known about subhanallah were narrated uh, were narrated from Aisha radiallahu anha she narrated over 2200 hadith I think if it wasn't for her and and her you know keen observation on everything and mashallah her, her incredible memory we wouldn't know how to interact with our spouses we wouldn't know what's permissible within marriage we would not know a lot of things uh, you know in terms of personal relationships if it weren't for her yeah. so the fact that you know she st she was still so young after the death of Prophet Sallallahu that she took advantage of that and that people came to study you know they yeah. came and they came to her and they sought her you know her knowledge knowledge from her and the fact that she was also a physician as well there's so many aspects about the person that she she was that we can draw so many lessons so not just from an Islamic point of view but even from an academic point of view mm -hmm. and the fact that she wasn't just you know a, a scholar in, in a hadith but she was also a physician people came to her with their ailments and that she was able to treat them and the fact that she was such a generous person that if anybody was in need of anything they didn't feel that they couldn't go to her and ask her for help yeah. and there's so many things about her that we look at and we think subhanallah do you know what she has so much to offer as a role model yeah I think another thing that we kind and tend to forget about is I think as Muslim women we seem to think that oh, our role um, you know our role as a Muslim woman is to be a wife and a mother and we think you know that's pretty much it we have to do those things and the fact is that she was a widow for most of her life and she had no children but look at how she made use of her talents and how she made use of her time I think we put too much stock into certain sort of roles and we don't think of like the, the talents that we have and the time that we have and we can, how we can best utilize that so I think that's yeah, she. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic point that you've raised there. And um, we have a caller on the line. Uh, we have Um Irad. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah for, for calling well. in. I understand you have a comment about uh, about this wonderful woman that we're discussing this morning, Aisha radiallahu an. I do, I do. Um, as if I was just listening to your talk, all of you, it's a great show, um, and uh, congratulate you on that. But, oh, thank you. Um, like one of the sisters uh, mentioned about the breaking the ball, as Aisha Zaltana felt a bit jealous. So, me, I'm, I'm a mum, I'm a wife as well. So, uh, sometimes we do try always to be very practicing, but sometimes it does happen to us as well. Yeah. You get impatient, you're tired, and all that. So when it does happen, I used to usually worry a lot that I have done something that I might have displeased a lot of Pantala. Yeah. But then afterwards, you feel that guilt. It just really, um, uh, you feel really bad about it. But to know that Umul Mu'mineen, obviously, she was a human being too. And if exactly. she's done it, obviously, I'm not going to say that what I do, that that's going to make me say, okay, if I do it, uh, more, it's all right. It won't be all right. Yeah. A patient's perseverance is good. But to know that human side of this great woman makes yeah. you feel a bit more relaxed. It's all right if it does happen and then you seek forgiveness and then you talk to your husband. It's all right. I've just done it. It was a mistake or whatever. Absolutely. It's relaxing and then it's good to know. Absolutely, that's absolutely true. And uh, Jazakallah here for calling in because that's actually a really good point. And I think um, the sisters actually touched upon something which I can really relate to because when I came into Islam, um, I kind of felt that, you know, the bar's so high and you've got all these fantastic women and it's, it's kind of unattainable. So, uh, you know, you get a bit kind of despondent and you think, oh, I'm never going to be like that. But it's so nice to kind of see an example of a woman who had good days and bad days and did amazing things, but, you know, also had kind of screaming rows with her husband and, and smash pots <laughs> so I think it's really nice to kind of see the two sides yeah, and it it's, does it's about seeing the human side you know they weren't superhuman yeah. they weren't faultless they weren't angels you know, like the yeah as well, exactly the companions. we have to understand they were human beings as well yeah I and think, they did have mistakes as well every now and then I, I think this is it. I think this is a really good point and I think actually when we're looking at Aisha or any of the Sahabas you know we should be thinking what can we what can we learn from this mm. person what can we learn from these stories and I think this is really what I want to kind of um, you know extract from the discussion today you know we're remembering such a great woman but practically what I want to know is you know what what can we take from her character and what can we how can we use these stories to make us better Muslims um, sister Ayan I think just to remember that at the end of the day just as they were human beings they were prone to making mistakes so are we I think we need to remember that Allah is always yeah. there for, you know waiting for us to repent so the things that we're going to make mistakes and it's important to remember that okay you've made a mistake you know you feel bad about it repent and then 
ask Allah to kind of guide you and to help you in rectifying, you know, parts of the character that you have that you're not happy with. Yeah. And then try your best to kind of avoid those things. I think the thing is just acknowledging the fact that you're not perfect. You're never going to be perfect. And yeah. I think once you acknowledge that, then it's easier to kind of go back and say, okay, I did something wrong. Let me fix that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a fantastic point. Um, and Sister Nusra, what about you? What, what, um, what is it about her character that you like most? Um, I think particularly, obviously I like all aspects of her character, but one aspect that I actually think that I think really resonates with me, particularly as well, obviously in the field of work that I do, is her approach to scholarship. Yes. She was a person that not only taught other people, but encouraged women and men alike to actually seek knowledge and fulfill that part um, of our religion, that obligation. She was among, she used to teach the, um, the companions, but she's also living proof that um, things like a career and family life are not mutually exclusive. What we can learn is that she's a role model and that liberation is sought through Islam. She proved that. Yeah. Liberation, yeah. We, don't, we shouldn't seek it through through um, things such as feminist movements or anything, but rather we look to Allah to, um, to give us that elevation. Um, she was a woman of true sacrifice, so that's something that generally I think within the Ummah we need to realize that sacrificing is what makes us Muslim and it's part of our deen. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, and Sister Shannon, I think what about what you? We would like. We should remember about her is that it's not just uh, you know her asset wasn't her youth or her beauty, mm. but rather you know her ability to record the sayings of the Prophet peace be upon him. Sorry, with her yeah. formidable mind, her intimate knowledge of the Quran. That um, Al Hakim states in his book Al Mustardak that uh, one fourth of the Sharia is narrated on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha. That even wow. the Prophet, peace be upon him, told uh, before he passed away, established her authority so that people can consult her in his absence. Mm -hmm. That in, uh, even under um, Umar in, ibn al Khattab, where she flourished under his caliphate, he would always consult her in every big and small issue. Yeah. So, as you said, a scholar, um, a, a judge, a stateswoman, many of these uh, things. And also, she was very noble, generous. The fact that she gave up um, her beloved burial ground uh, for Umar ibn al Khattab because she knew that he was very beloved to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. and um yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so much you know, to remember so much, her by. So much to say, Subhanallah. And I think, um, you know, for me, um, something that I very much admire about her, um, uh, you know, aside from from yeah. what you you uh, you've all mentioned already, is her generosity of spirit. And we, we again, so many hadith um, where she's um, one in particular where she's fasting um, and she yeah. she has nothing. She has literally a few dates. Um, you know, again, similarly, we hear Prophet peace be upon him was in this situation a lot, but but so was she. Um, and she was fasting all day, and then some. Uh, a, a, a poor woman from who lived locally came to her and said, I'm so hungry, I have nothing to eat. Do you have anything for me and my children? Um, and she said, well, I, I have these dates and, and you can have these. So she gave the only thing that she had to break her fast with. Um, but her, her faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was such that she said, I know that if I give this food for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will replace it with something better. And sure enough, later that day, um, another neighbor brought round, uh, you know, a prepared dish of, of kind of meat and, and uh, you know, kind of lovely food for her. So she had given up the dates and Allah had replaced it with something better and she never lost that faith and she always um, that that's how she lived her life by that example and that's something you know that I love and I try to um, you know uh, uh, live up to inshallah inshallah, inshallah. 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 Jazakallah for sharing I really enjoyed this discussion after Khadija al-Kubra the great and Fatima al-Zahra the resplendent Aisha al-Sadiq the one who affirms the truth is regarded as the best women in Islam because of her strength of personality she was a leader in every field in knowledge in society in politics and in war Aisha's marriage to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him at an early age allowed her to be an eyewitness to the personal details of his every life and carry them on to the succeeding generations what an inspirational discussion we've had about a truly inspirational woman. And if you've missed any of this episode, you can, of course, catch the repeat tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. inshallah. And don't forget, our highlight show is on Sunday at 3 p.m. And that will give you a roundup of all the action from this week's shows. We're off to another break now, but do stay tuned as we'll be back with our last segment. And we'll be deliberating over another provocative quote, inshallah. So don't go anywhere. See you in a few minutes for that. Assalamu alaikum.